Right, so after watching pretty much every one of Matt Armstrong's videos, I've come to the conclusion it isn't rocket science, it's just, you know, cars and metal and bits of plastic. Right, Matt Armstrong has, you know, Porsches, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Maseratis, some really nice cars, don't get me wrong. Um, but I haven't got that. I've got a, uh, a Kia Soul. Uh, unfortunately, a woman, um, an actual woman with, you know, ovaries and boobs, crashed into my wife while she was driving it and wrote and the insurance company wrote it off which you know was sad um but looking at it and i was looking at it thinking i've seen matt armstrong fix worse than this can't be that difficult you know he's done it around the back of an indian restaurant so you know could i do it so i phoned the insurance company and said how much can i buy the car back for and they were like well we give you three thousand four hundred pound for it which is good you know more than i wanted and well, not more than I wanted, but it was a lot lot more than I thought it'd be worth. And they said I could buy it back for four hundred pounds, or four hundred and four pounds to be botanic. And I was like, Yeah, fuck it, I have it. Even if I buy it back and sell the wheels and sell the seats and you know, sell the door, it's covered the cost. I went on eBay, done a bit of window shopping like you do. I needed to buy um a headlight, wing, a wheel arch liner and wheel arch wing and a couple of brackets to hold those those things on the bumper was fucked but in my head i thought i could fix it and this in this video you'll be able to see whether i do or not impressed how much i enjoyed tinkering with it maybe it won't be the last one i do it wasn't really difficult i've done body work before i've been on a painting course two day painting course so technically i am qualified painter but i i don't paint you know i'll probably paint once or twice a year and it's literally square boxes so having to paint a bumper or a wing mm, could be quite difficult or maybe not we're gonna put everything back on because i've now done everything hopefully it come up <laughs> hopefully it goes back on as easy as it come off because i literally went out there to wash the car to assess the damage and thought well that's a 10 mil socket i've got a 10 mil socket and then within 40 minutes everything was off and i knew what i needed to get but here we go Hey guys, how's it going? A um, little bit different to what I'm used to. So we're going to be tinkering with this, look. A car bumper. Uh, I can do paint work, I can do body work. I've done things like that in the past. Been on a couple of courses, so I know I'm doing that side of things, but I've never repaired a bumper. So this is <clears throat> a plastic bumper. And we're going to try and use this stuff here. We're going to try and use some JB Weld. I see you guys in America talking about this stuff all the time. It seems to be really good, so we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna use some of this. I've got a plastic welder as well that we're gonna to use to just pin things in, to stop it cracking and splitting. And then if it looks horrendous, we have to buy a new bumper. If it doesn't, then, you know, I'm 300 pound up. Let's get cracking, I'll show you. Let's get cracking. Look at me with the puns. I'll show you the cracks and the damage that the bumpers had done to it. So this is the damage that we've had done, so it's clearly scuff the paint which is fine because we're gonna to have to do some paint anyway it's cracked it all the way along here and cracked it there and if we flip it over um, if we flip it over it's done all this down here and along up to about that point this you know no one's ever going to see this so we're not too fussed about it this they are going to see it so we're going to have to make sure we do do a good job with that and we'll see whether we can repair this actually might not be worth it from what i can gather i've done a bit of reading you just got to basically clean it up degrease it and then um add your jb weld and we're just going to try and use the JB Weld to pin things in um, to keep it there and then we use the, the plastic welder to um, obviously strengthen it up and make it so it's you know never going to come off again. So we've sprayed some cleaner on there we're just letting that do its, its thing and then we're going to wipe it off degrease it and then shove a bit of JB Weld in there. Right, so that's the bumper nice and clean now. I've sprayed it with some, um, just some cleaning 
for the solution. It's going to eat through the dirt and I think it's done that. Then I sprayed it with some de degreaser and then I used some windoline because it's alcohol based and it should get rid of any grease and stuff that the, the degreaser has left on there. Um, if that makes sense, probably not. So this is what we're left with. It looks dirty, but it's not. It's all nice and clean. I wouldn't eat my dinner off of it, but some people probably would. Um, what I'm going to try and do is use some masking tape and try and pin everything back as it was and then throw a bit of that JD weld in there and let that dry and then we'll go through and we'll pinch it round with some, some staples. Right, so this is a JD weld. We're going to mix it up as it says. Right, so there's the instructions. Give you a little scraper, little spreader. We're just going to dab a little bit in there, and then we'll just put some out along there, squeeze it together, and see how we go. Quite an even amount, but right. that go. Put the lid on. And then it says to mix it up evenly. And then it says once it's dry it can be sanded so we can just pummel it on really. I'm going to try and get some in the cracks. And then we're going to squeeze it together. We're just going to smother it on. Once we use up what we've got. I'm not worried about the other ones just yet. I just want to try and get as much on this as I can. I'm starting to get a bit hard now. I can tell by his tight pants. Oh, that's in that crack. Oh yeah, look at me with all the innuendos. It's actually coming through the other side, which is good. Well, right, we're just going to get a shit out of this in there. And hopefully the JB Weld does the rest. Right, so I'll put the air con on. It's getting a little bit toasty in here now. 21 degrees it is. Far too hot, especially with this jumper. So we've um we've welded this, JD welded this, JB welded that, and it seems to be in the drying stage now, so we're tacky. This one here, we're gonna scratch it up like we did with this. I forgot to mention that I did do that. And then we're just gonna throw a couple of little um welds in there. We got a load of those and a load of them ones. They should be fine. low it's always fucking low in these things um right so it's the next day all right let's try that again so see if the battery's gonna last more than two seconds right so basically i'd done this last night i was in here till about half ten at night and i uh, managed to get quite a fair bit done um so i managed to put some jb weld on all the cracks and then i pinned it with the um plastic welder you know the little cheap pin things that you get it seems to have dried really well and held, so I'll just show you. So this is this is what I've done. So remember I started up here, and that is all solid to be honest with you. And then all this in here looks like it's dried really well. And then we had all of this at the bottom here. Still a bit flexible if you want it to be, so that's good. So I think that's going to be all right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to snip all those um, little uh, staples off, and then we're going to spin it over, 
and then see what the damage is the other side. Maybe put a bit of filler on. Got my goggles on because I don't want one of these uh, staples flying off and stabbing me in the eye. I've got my little snips that comes with the kit. Probably not going to be able to cut a bit of metal, but we'll see. Yeah, as I thought. We got these ones that I bought from the car boot. Yeah, that's more like it. No one's ever going to see it, so let's not worry about that too much. Right, so I'm going to cut, cut the rest of these off. It's going to be boring for me, so it's definitely going to be boring for you to watch, so I'll pick up in a bit. Right, so I've taken all the pins off and I'm just going to buzz over it with this um, sander I've got. First time I'm using it as a sander. I did use it uh, to get the bump off the other day as a multi-tool. It may work, it may not. I'll give it a go. Uh, it's going to be probably a bit noisy actually, and I should wear. Alright, let's try it anyway. Yeah, that didn't do anything. Just ripped the paper up. Yeah, let's just make a lot of noise. No one's ever going to see this anyway. So... Should we just leave it? Yeah. So this is a crack on the other side, got a little bit of sanding down to do there. Uh, that's come out really well, a little bit of sand in there. And the top bit, there's not nowhere to be seen, so... Alright, so unfortunately the way it's dried there is not very good, so I'm going to have to try and reshape that. Not the best invention, but it gets you out of a out of a squeeze. To be honest with you. Right. So, I've in in and amongst the accident, uh, we found out that the um, what we found out the fog light was hanging out. So, I basically put in a boot. Done all this work and realised that I need to start thinking about putting that back on. So I'll show you what where I've got to. So this is the said fog light. Um, it's absolutely fine apart from the brackets have actually come off here, here, and here. Like so, they were they were only glued on anyway, um, and not a lot was holding them on to be honest with you. So kind of luckily for me, there's. Two of the brackets are still there, but this one is missing. Um, now, I watched Pudding's Fab Shop, and he says, if two wouldn't hold it, three was never gonna. So I'm gonna go with that logic, because it, to me it makes perfect sense, and he is a borderline redneck genius. So I put the two on, and then I might just come up with some kind of contraption to make sure that that side isn't just gonna flap around and we'll make sure it's all sort of bonded on. So we're just going to sand off a bit of paint that I've just put on there and um, put some JB Weld on it, I suppose. It seems to be holding up everywhere else. I'll just show you. So that's all JB Welded. I don't know if you remember it yesterday. It was literally flapping around. This is flapping around there, and it's now not. I just still need to put a little bit more in there and a touch in there. That's easily done. And then this side, I'm just lightly gone over it just to make sure that I can fill it. There's a little bit of a high spot here, which we will sand down, skim over, and it should be fine. So this is the last little bit of the JB Weld, so we've got to make it last. I'm sure there's probably about uh, maybe half an inch in there we can. This is how good that stuff is. It's literally... That's, that paintbrush is now rock hard. Um, I use a paintbrush just to go over it, just to sort of spread it out a little bit because I had a load on there. Um, but everything else 
yes, it's flexible as well. So uh, I'm not going to try and be a JB salesman because it just wouldn't do it any justice. But it seems to be quite. That seems to be rock hard, which is what you want. So we're going to stick these two brackets on, whack that on. Hopefully that holds, and then we've got a little bit more to put on there, a little bit over there. Right, that's about as much as we're going to get out of that, I think. You can see this. Right, okay, we're back and uh, I've done a bit of research over the last couple of days and watched a couple of guys who fixed these bumpers a lot worse than this. So I'm hoping that they're going to uh, teach me a thing or two. So what I, what one of them said to do was basically find all your um, your cracks, uh, which I have done. And then what you want to do is get like a Dremel, a Dremel or Dremel, and basically score I'll show you what, I was, what I've been doing. So basically, you find your crack. And what you want to do is like channel um, the, ch the cracks out to make like a V. And what we're going to do is when we plastic weld these bits here, the plastic will go in there and it'll be a lot stronger. I've also got some, um, some mesh in to come uh, and I'll be adding that to the back just to give it a bit more strength. So you've got the JB weld the staples and we're going to have some uh, meshing probably not the best order to do it in but it's the order I'm doing it in so what are you going to do about it so basically what you want to do is find uh, something else that somebody said to do as well is when you've got cracks and the finishing point uh, wherever they finish what you want to do is just drill a hole at the at the finishing point of the crack and what that should do is stop the crack once you repair it it should stop it splitting after that point uh, whether that's true or not I don't know this is my first time doing anything this big um, so I'm gonna basically find the cracks here and I'm gonna channel those out I might film a little bit and I'm just gonna do these ones now Um, this is probably a week later I've got to this point so we basically identified all of our damage repaired it from the back like that made a complete mess of my shed and what we're going to do now is find all our cracks and we're going to use this heat gun type thing plastic welder with these little plastic rods and you're just basically going to heat them up pop them in there and that should and I mean should fix it then we're going to spin it over and put some mesh in I think there's some mesh in here somewhere I've uh, got a little bit of this mesh in and we're going to put that on the back just to strengthen it up I don't think it needs it because it's got the plastic staples but we're going to do it anyway because we've got it so Let's have, a, let's have a look, shall we? Right, there's no indication to say that that's on or not. What you want to do is heat it up and push it in. And then just burn it out. Right, so I'm now covered in dust. I have had a mask on, so I am doing the old health and safety quite well. Covered in dust. Um, this is where I've got to. Uh, so, all the plastic welds in, all the cracks. As you can see, there's no more cracks there. Let me just 
faint line of where there used to be a cracks, but I'm all right with that. This side is going to get a nice skim all the way over it, so whatever blemishes are on there, you're not going to see. Plus, no one's ever going to see anyway because they're on the bottom. Uh, I'm a little disired with that. I can still, I've been sanding that for ages, and I can't. I still feel a lump, so I'm going to try and just just build up a little bit there. <laughs> So I've gone for this plastic bumper filler um, from Halfords. It's uh, it about £10 uh, for 100 mil. I don't think it's going to be enough, but um, we'll see how we get on with it. I also have bought some um, Dolphin Glaze, which I'm hoping it's alright to put on bumpers, but it just gives it that nice smooth finish, which is what I'm going for. So um, let's mix some filler up. So you get a little bit of hardener, a little scraper, and some filler. It's basically 10 to 1 if you've never mixed fit up before. So we're going to go for, I'm not going to go mad for now, just put about that much on. About that much, that's all you need. Just make sure you get it in. Don't it was like stir because you'll get air bubbles so you just want to basically in it up and down making sure that hardness got in all of the black stuff you've, you've got about four minutes i suppose with this stuff before it starts going rock hard So we're on the final hurdle, it's cold. I've been out here all day. This is the state of my, what, that was once clean shed. So, um, yeah. So basically I'll put some finishing putty on this and I got it to a point where I was really happy with it. There was a couple of like little blemishes, little, um, little tiny lines and a couple of little uh, air bubbles. So I've got some of this dolphin finishing putty, whatever it's called, and I've skimmed over it. Just trying to wait for it to dry. It ain't there yet. I might just leave this overnight and just come back and do it tomorrow now. Just another day getting dirty, isn't it really? Shall I? Yeah, fuck it. Right, so we're back again. This is probably three or four days later. We've had the, and they are actually in a new year now. This is how long this bump has taken. It isn't actually taking that long, but yeah, we're actually in a new year, so happy new year, if I haven't, if you haven't already heard that. So this is the glaze, the dolphin glaze. Um, just basically skimmed it over, left it for ages. I'm just gonna nip that down now. Apparently it's supposed to be really easy to sand. So we're gonna uh, take all this off. And um, that should be it done, ready for paint. The only thing I've found is there's a little bit there and there. I might just nip them up a little bit. Other than that, it's looking good. Right. Oh, yeah. This is, I don't 
know if you can pop this. You're not, you can't even pop this stuff. How boring is that? Why does he stomp on it? I don't think, no, I don't think they've made pop bubble wrap that you can't even pop. That's criminal. We've got a new light. It can only go in one way. I did. Do you want to get two of them out for me? Somebody crashed in there anyway, so it's driving it. So we're, up, we're back again, bumper's done, just waiting for paint to turn up so we can paint that. Uh, the wing is there as well, I need to key that up and uh, just give it a bit of a wash, make sure it's you know not going to react to the paint. So we're just waiting for paint to turn up, but in the meantime I went to Coventry, did I go to Coventry? Yeah, I went to Coventry and bought this wheel. Uh, it's been refurbed and They've done a really good job on it, on it actually. But it's got a brand new tyre, refurb the wheel. So I am going to make it look like that one because that one's been dented there and the tyre's punctured. Oh, let's put it that way. So I kind of thought I've got to buy a new tyre anyway. It's going to cost me 80 quid. I might as well buy this and paint this one up. And I haven't got to get the other one repaired. So that's what we're going to do today. Like any bit of painting, we're going to uh, clean the wheel up. We're going to key it up. So basically you're just going to lightly scratch it. Um, but you want to try and scratch it in such a way where you don't see the scratches. Um, just gives the paint something to bite against. And then we're going to clean it again, because that's what we ever seem to do when you paint. Clean, clean, clean. And then we're going to throw some paint on it and uh, go from there. I did kind of cheat a little bit because I did paint the inside of the wheel the other day, just so um, I was out, just because I could. <laughs>
Right, so I've been advised to get some of this stuff. It's rust proofing for cars, so apparently it prevents it and it stops it from happening. So I think it can actually sort of like slow down the process of anything that's dying to rust now. So we're just gonna base, open it up and uh, dip all our screws in it. Any kind of metal work that looks like it's rusting, we're gonna put some, some of this over the top. And hopefully that's all I need to do, but I'm just gonna blaster it everywhere I think it needs to go. So this is pretty boring, so I'm probably just going to rush for it all. Um, but it does look a bit... It actually looks quite nice. I'm not ready yet. That's going to be gnarly. So I think I've got the wing back on and I'm digging the lines, I must admit. They look alright to me. We've got the liner in. That was alright. So anyway, let's go get the bumper. Right, so everything's back on, and I'm about to go for my first ride. Um, my first ride since I drove it back after it was crashed, so I'm a bit nervous. We're listening for creaks and bangs. Obviously, obviously it's been parked up for like nine weeks, so the brakes are gonna be a little bit shit, which we're, that's fine. Drive around with the brakes on just to see whether we can free up any of that. Right, 
right, so I've taken this for a bit of a long drive, and I'm thinking it's the brakes discs that because they've been sat for so long. Right, so this is probably six weeks after I finished doing the Kia, and I'm just wrapping up this video to sort of say, was it worth me buying the car back from the insurance and doing a Matt Armstrong? And uh, was it worth the hassle? Was it worth the money? Was it worth it? Absolutely. It wasn't too difficult. I've done some painting in the past before. So that side of things wasn't really, obviously I'm, a, I'm out of practice. I haven't done it for a long time. So it's almost like starting from scratch again, but it's like riding a bike. Everyone's been there, you know, she's a good girl. But was it worth it? Absolutely. Uh, it ended up costing me £400 to buy, £404 to buy back from the insurance company. Um, but to be honest with you, they paid me like £400 more than I thought they were going to pay anyway. So that was kind of good. So it's even Stevens. So it, in parts, I reckon it cost me about £400. £350 to £400, give or take a tenner. You know what I mean? I think I bought a new wing, headlight, Wheel, in, in a wheel liner and uh, a couple of brackets to hold the wings and the bumpers on obviously paint was about 30 quid and so yeah in, in all it cost me 400 pound to to fix so 400 pound to buy it back 400 pound to fix this car's cost me 800 quid was it worth it absolutely would i say do it yes depended on your skill level and how many YouTube videos you can watch to see whether you can fix something like what you've got, you know, give it a go. Uh, yeah, I love, I love the tinkering with it. I love the fact that I've now got a fully working car that looks nice again. And I kind of did it myself, you know, a big pat on the back. Uh, would I suggest you guys do it? You know, give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video or took a little bit of inspiration from it or learned something probably not but if you learned something give us a thumbs up uh, if you could subscribe it doesn't cost you anything doesn't cost me anything it's just I don't know just try and make some more some some similar sort of things uh, I've got a couple of cars that I want to change oils on and things like that so you know I've got no idea what I'm doing when it comes to that side of things so that should be funny 